by the back team. 10-19. Keep in mind that the number of points to win this match is 25. Eddie Golden, Albert Puzzy, known as fighters right to the last ounce of strength, now have made it 11-19. They can score three or four points and stay in the game and then get the other team out rather rapidly. They may have a chance to reverse this trend and come up with enough superpower to win the match. Nothing dramatic has happened yet. The game has fallen into a certain pattern. Golden, Apuzzi, and Sheldon all bringing the ball in play. But as I suggested before, keeping Robert Sastry on the left side and giving him free reign, he's the one who has made things happen. Albert Apuzzi serving. That's an ace. That means the ball went over the short line in play and the receivers were not able to return it. Albert is a type of player, if he scores an ace, he will stay with that and go for another ace. He'll go back to it. Oh, sure. If, now that he went to the long line, he had a fall. That's why he's changed serve for the long line. You want to be more conservative if you have a fall, because two falls and you lose your serve. So many players make an error. They power both serves. If you're going to power the second serve, being a little more cautious about where it's going, you might as well use you might as well use less energy to keep the ball in play and use the saved energy for the volley. But Albert, uh, he's in one mode. He's determined to get this team back into competition. Sasri has just overswung. Now there's a timeout. Mickey, Mickey. During this timeout, I'm going to introduce you to one of the guiding lights of this handball fraternity for many, many years. He was a fellow who was in charge of the Amateur Athletic Union, the AAU, which was the forerunner of the United States Handball Association. So with these many, many years of experience in the game, not only as a player, but also as an administrator and a referee, I'd like to ask Mickey whether or not, in his opinion, one wall handball has gone up, has stayed the same, or has gone down. Mickey? Do I come closer? Do I go further right away? Front. Can you hear me? Yes. Why don't you come over here so you... Right. We'll bring him over to another wall so maybe we can shut out some of the peripheral noise. Same question applies. Is one wall handball, is that game gone up, stayed the same, or gone down in popularity? It has to have gone down. Watchers are concerned because you were mentioning a while back, I heard you in the 20s, you said they had the first tournament, 24 I believe. At that time there was no no game of playing one ball with a soft ball the way there is today with a racket ball. There was no racket ball, there was no paddle ball. There was no interest in tennis, there was no interest in so many other games that the young people today would be interested in. So today, you have, I think, a much smaller group of players. Do you think today's population of handball players, especially the younger ones, even though they have these other diversions, do you think they become sissies and they don't want to play this game because they're fearful they may hurt their delicate little hands? Well, I mean, that's part of it. I think the ball is, is hard compared to all the other balls that are around, and there are many parts where they play one wall handball, where they play with the white label ace, they play with the green ball, so many soft balls. Okay, we're going to get back to Mickey in a little while. We're going to continue to watch this match. Okay, David Sheldon serving. Still have a big lead. And they put Robert Sastry on the right where I believe he's gonna be boxed in. Albert and Eddie have continued to switch back and forth. I don't think that's good for anybody. You should just stay with one flow until something happens. If you're doing poorly, make the switch and then stay there. 
No purpose is served by continually moving back and forth. Eddie Golden popped in a shot from the right side. I think it was purely gratuitous so far as their effort is concerned. The score is now 19-15. There has been a little trend here, a mini trend. Let's see how the younger players, who don't have the tournament experience of the other fellas, stay with it as Albert and Eddie try and make a move to unseat Robert Sastry and David Sheldon from the semifinal round. Sastry surfing again. He now has 20 points. Remember, 25 points will win the match. ball was called. There wasn't a clear view of the ball. Albert is changing. He's taking off his sweatshirt. He's perspiring tremendously. The thing that amazes me is that there was only one time out called in this whole game, that there wasn't any glove change that I could detect. This is a very closed in place, not much oxygen, a lot of humidity. As you probably know, it's been foggy in New York for the past week or so. And some of the thinking on the court may be getting foggy. But there's one thing that propels the player onward, is that little glow in his brain that says he's the best, he's on the court, he's going to win. You and I know that only one team can win. But it's that wonderful fascination with the psyche that suggests every person is a winner. Of course, then we have to look at the moment of truth and see who actually did win, not only this match, but over time. That's why you have great names like Herskowitz and Playtack and Thorwald. And the Obit brothers that I mentioned before, Torres, Derso. These are the names, Steve Sandler, many years a champion in one wall. These are the names that live on in the handball fraternity. There's a national magazine dedicated to handball. Comes out six times a year. Talks about the various facets of this wonderful game. If you're interested, get in touch with your local channel, Manhattan Cable TV, or you might want to write to me, Ruby Obert, 2750 Homecrest Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11235. And if you have any other questions about any aspect of this game, I'll be delighted to call you, correspond with you, so that we can both continue to enjoy this wonderful game. Albert Apuzzi serving now has 16 points. Eddie Golden, before it touched the floor, his team is out. That was a wonderful volley. Both teams concentrating tremendously. Both teams were concentrating tremendously. There's the second time out of this match, and in the interim, you now know that the team that was behind by 10 points is now making a move. Mickey Blackman is going to join us again so we can continue with this interview. In, in the few moments that we had, it just occurred to me, and I support my argument, one wall. The three overs went to four walls after being great one wall players. Now, Mickey. A different game. We're going to continue in a moment. We're back to the game. Backing up, 
lost sight of the ball for a moment, and now the team serving has 22 points. Sheldon brilliantly put a serve right at the long line, backing up his opponents. That was a wonderful serve. That was another hit the ball. Ball was moving cross court to Albert Apuzzi. He lost sight of it. Maris Lewitsky correctly called it a hit the ball. Another fast-paced volley. All teams, their senses completely attuned to what the game situation is. The team up front wants to end it in their own favor. The team in the back wants to stay alive. The team up front has 23. They need two more points. At this stage of the game, somebody makes a mistake on either team. The team that's falling behind over swings or well, the team that's serving thinks they have the game ended. It's now 24 match point. Again, Sheldon puts a brilliant serve right on the long line. Robert Sastry misses the ball. How is this shot? I had the feeling that was going to go out long. Plus, yeah. Even though you may have imagined that ball going out to the player, they don't want to make a mistake of losing by default, letting the ball drop. So they will typically take a ball and just keep it in play. Robert, Robert Sastry, who is dynamic play, and David Sheldon, through steadiness, have combined, to my judgment, to have beat the seeded player, players of Albert Apuzzi and Eddie Golden. As I mentioned, they're singles players, basically. And when you try and combine that under different conditions that they're used to, it makes it very difficult. I'm going to bring Mickey Blackman back here for a moment. Mickey Blackman, we, we want to just continue this thought about handball, where it is, as we last left off, Mickey was suggesting that uh, handball isn't where it was in the golden era of some time ago. So, what I'd like to ask... One wall handball. One wall handball. I'd like to ask Mickey now is, with all his years of experience, what in his judgment has to be done now in order to bring one wall handball back to the pinnacle where it once was placed? Mickey? Well, uh... I'm sorry to say, I don't think it can be done. What you have here, for example, just look at the last game we had. You had Robert Sastry, who was a tremendous athlete. He's a paddleball player. You have Eddie Golden, who is here. And uh, I don't know if we can uh, disclose this. He's here for the money. He doesn't play this game. He plays with the big blue ball all the time. David Sheldon plays only because his father brought him up, probably from the age of zero. You will play handball. Yeah, but that's the current crop of players. What that's I'm interested crop, in... And I don't see any future for us otherwise. But you must have an idea in mind how no. we can cultivate no, in the idea. youth of no. New York particularly... I don't have an idea okay. in this game okay. as such, okay. despite the fact that you'd like me to have one. All right. Well, Go I want... to the parks okay. and you will find that they are playing with the mean green ball, the paddle ball, because it's softer. Where they don't play with that ball, they play with the Mikasa ball. Where they don't play with that, they play with the Boyd paddle ball, which is also a soft ball. And where they don't play with any of these normal-sized handballs, they play with the large racket ball. Or they play tennis, or they play racket ball, or they play paddle ball. It does not hurt your hands. This is not a society that wants to hurt their hands. Okay. Having said that, and thank God this is a democracy, I would like Otherwise, to take the wouldn't let me say it. I would like to take the counter position. For the last 11 years I've been putting on handball clinics in over 60 of the 90 public high schools and private high schools in this city. 
What I have found is an overwhelming reservoir of talent, unbelievable talent. Yes, unfortunately, unfortunately, because of economic, because of economic circumstances, we find out that as soon as these students graduate, and believe me, there's boys and girls with tremendous talent, but what happens is when they graduated, they're faced with something called surviving, and therefore they have to go out and work and contribute to their family support. The other big factor is, and this is not a predominant factor, these same young people who are in the age of gratification, wanting it now, wind up marrying at a young age and therefore instead of having the luxury of leisure time to devote to handball which can be done they are out trying to earn a living not only for themselves but for their newfound families when my brothers and i played we had full-time jobs we had marriages and families we went to graduate school at night and still found the time in order in order to, yes, because now you are on the wanted list. What I'm suggesting is that we have to have a positive is this opinion. The sociologist or the sociopath? We has we have to have a positive opinion about the girl and boys that we want to promote in this game. And the very fact that we're here with cable television, trying to make the message more available to more people. And I'm not going to reveal some other plans we have in mind, but it rela relates to youth programs in trying to bring handball back to the pinnacle where it was. Now, Mickey has told us a side of the picture which is very accurate, but I'm suggesting there's an even bigger picture, and it's on that bigger picture that we have to concentrate our attention. Albert Apozzi, the fellow who ran this tournament, has been in this game for the last 10 to 15 years competitive-wise. He suspected that there was a decline in the game. And through his efforts, we're trying to promote the game. So, I'm not going to give Mickey another opportunity to really add something positive so to this. I'm not going to give him not. the opportunity to add something positive to the sport, but I would like to have his last comment about what this subject is all about. Mickey? What is the subject now? The subject is what, in your opinion, can further the game of one wall handball, first in New York City and then in the nation? Well, certainly you have to have more courts around the nation if you want one wall handball. Let's restrict it to one wall in New York where we have 1,200 courts. You said the nation, didn't you? I said after New York City, the nation. You have to have we have 1,200 courts in New York City. Let's stick with New York City. After, after the nation, you want me to stick with New York? No, first New York and then the this nation. Is, this is a running thing ever since... Uh, if we're successful uh, here, we'll be successful nationwide and worldwide. Just you want to be worldwide. Nationwide. nationwide. We want your opinion. And yeah. worldwide wow. After New York City, if you start you with yourself, you start with your family, and then we talk about cities, states, and nations. You need more one wall but in New York City, we have those. You, you, said there was a, you said there was a decline of one wall in New York. We have the courts. Now I want your opinion how to make it go. I can't, uh, okay. I can't okay. work oh. against the time. Thank you, Marcus, Mickey oh. Blackman. And now I want Morris Levitsky's opinion about the same question. I'll give you my opinion. Uh, hold it. We have Mickey. I go back. Have, 20, no, no, over here. Over I here. go back 20 years before you. Yes. Okay. When we did have one wall play. Right. And when we had an indoor tournament. Yes. We had a minimum of 200 people watching, and they contributed about a half a buck. Yes. This was at the Trinity Club. Today we have a tournament here. I daily don't even think we had 60 people watching the. Morris. My question is, what? in New York City, with a proliferation of one-wall courts, over 1,000, and with a school system of 60 to 90 high schools with a lot of talent in each, because I've witnessed it firsthand, I'm asking you this question directly. If there was a downturn in one-wall handball, what, in your view, can we do in 1991 that will promote the game as this 
videotape will try to do what in your opinion having been through the wars of 30 and 40 years of handball what in your judgment can be done to promote this wonderful game is it a positive attitude or is it a negative attitude or is it a neutral attitude what you love the game so I'm keenly interested in what you think the right way of approaching this subject is my opinion is a neutral attitude I'd like to see it built up, and actually, it's a very difficult situation because you got the kids today that want to play ball, realize that they'd rather get interested in a professional sport, in tennis, basketball, or football where they could earn money. What kids in New York City can get into tennis, basketball, and football? It's from the from the areas of which handball kids now predominate, where 40% of you the school population is black and Hispanic, where will they get the opportunity to hone their skills in order to get into professional sports? Handball today is a very minor sport in the high school. Why? Even though the Board of Education is spending a lot of money, and they have coaches, and they all have teams, they have girls teams and boys teams. They can't get organized as to what type of ball they like to play with. The ball they use is the regulation ball. No, They've never changed it. They've kids, been doing that since the inception of the PSAL. A lot of kids don't like to play with the small blue. They learn how to play it in high school, even though before they went to high school, they played with a softer ball. But since the rule is you use a standard a ball to, to promote the game, why do you think they change afterwards to go to a softer ball? Because they, we don't have the apparatus to bring out their skills in tournaments. The answer to that is they'd rather play barehanded. Some of the kids haven't even got not enough money to buy gloves. And they're going at it like we were school kids when we played with the pink ball. That's an excellent point. Now, with all that in mind, what, in your judgment, has to be done in order to promote the great game of handball? What has to be done? There should be prizes awarded. Cash prizes should be awarded to all people that participate in one ball handball rather than medals and trophies. Where will the money come from? That I don't know. Okay. It, doesn't it seem to you unusual that if you won your first medal or your first trophy as a kid, you will have that for your whole life, whereas if you win a money prize, you will have spent it? Where is the transition between what the game and the sport and the symbols of the sport mean? If you paid money prizes, you wouldn't have a Hall of Fame today. The idea was that there were trophies, you were playing for the glory of the game, and in my judgment, that concept should be continued. It seems to me, if you introduce money, you also might introduce gambling. And if gambling comes in, as it did in the 60s, it'll have a deleterious effect on the promotion of this sport. What you have to do is try and keep it as pure and as simple as you can, dedicate your time and effort to athleticism, and to try and develop some common sense and perhaps some good brains in those now athletically developed bodies. We're going to have Bill, we're going to have Bill Taub come over. Bill. I won my first medal in the city championship handball. It disappeared. <laughs> So it's just the same as winning money. When you get to a certain age, a lot of things disappear. Unfortunately, brain. you would have kept that medal. But what we want to do now is bring on Bill Taub. Bill Taub has been a long-time player, referee, administrator. He's been in this game a very long time, and one of his greatest challenges and one of his greatest things to be done, they have what's called in the United States Handball Association the diamond singles. That means over 70, doesn't it? This man doesn't look like he's over 50. We're going to check his driver's license. But in the world championship for the over 70 category, he took third prize, which means that from competitors all over the country, which is not like New York where one wall is just there, he took the third prize. He's going to show it to us. I don't have it. Uh, but it was a beautiful glass plaque. It had embedded 
lettering that he was the champ. It had a wonderful picture of a handball player, and I'm sure he wouldn't want a money prize. Rather, he would have liked to have that treasured plaque, which he won at the age of 70, and he'll treasure it for so long as he plays handball. And then coming out number three, I beat the U.S. champ. He beat the United States champ of that category, and this was a world championship with different countries. But let's get back to where we are. The basic question to Bill, with all his experience in handball, is how can we first promote one wall handball in New York City with its 1,200 courts, the ultimate objective to go national and worldwide, but what, in his opinion, has to be done in order to promote one wall handball in New York City? I think uh, one wall handball players are probably the most talented athletes in the world. I think they require more skill, and more speed, and more stamina than any of the other sports. And what you need really to promote one wall handball is notoriety, notoriety and publicity, which we don't have, which we don't have. If you can get somebody that could really notarize, plug this here again, the way it should be plugged, whether it be TV, the newspaper, the sports columnist, or whatever. You raise an excellent question. But it is the toughest sport going. You can get a million and one people that play tennis, that play golf, play racquetball, out of those, very few can play handball, only because it's a very, very difficult sport. When, when I was growing up in this game and then got into competition, we tried to get handball interest ex accelerated at our club. And you know what we did? The top champions came down and put on exhibitions. The top champions, like Vic Herskowitz, my brother Oscar, came down, put down on exhibitions and clinics, and the younger players were in awe of these great masters. Of course, they may have lost a half a step, but by keeping the continuity of the game going, by making note of players who have been playing in the past, and such as yourself, who are national champions and have now still continued to participate, it seems to me that the way to get this game promoted is to have more clinics, more exhibitions, more work by Matthew Paris and the cable companies. But the next question is, as it relates to New York itself, knowing that you have all these kids in the schools, what do you think the next logical step would be to promote it in New York City? Well, I think right now one of the problems is probably uh, money. Excellent. That's co precisely correct. Go on. Uh, the kids today to go out and buy the equipment, sneakers and gloves and balls which are Excellent. expensive and not to receive anything in return for being a champion and a top athlete presents a problem. So when we can get the...